we're back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Insider Film Breakdown focused on the defense with my guy, Vance Beffer, who, by the way, we even heard from Georgia fans who said, look, listen to your breakdowns before the game. While the prediction of a Michigan victory, uh, you know, we're going to give it to you over that. We like the analysis. You think you have some good uh, some good guys, some knowledgeable guys on, on, on football, on these teams, and on what the matchup was going to look like. Uh, impressive to say the least. I wanted to hear what our guys had to say in the aftermath of the game, especially the gentleman with me here today, Mr. Vance Bedford. And Vance, I got to start out by saying everything that other than the outcome, everything that you said about how Georgia would attack, brother, I mean, you kept your Nostradamus hat on because they were right there with it again. You know, it, I was really shocked. And I'm sitting there watching the game, and I got a bit, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because that first drive, everything you and I talked about from Bunch to where's number 19, they got empty. They went right down the football field at the strength of Michigan's team. That's the defense. You know, they were quick game. They slid a protection to Aiden. Uh, they went match protect. They went empty. The ball was out quick. They challenged our secondary. I got to be honest, I was sitting at the game. I was shocked at how easily they went up and down the field those first couple of drives. I, I really was. I still cannot believe how easily they attacked our defense. I, I can't believe it. Yeah, I would say that, that for me, uh, it, it wasn't – I guess I wasn't as surprised that they were able to exploit the things that you're talking about. So, And I'll have you get into this in detail. So – Formation, as I tweeted, as folks who follow me on Twitter know, I said, man, their their formation in Michigan to death on this drive. They come out in the first drive. You say, hey, guess what George is going to try to do? They're going to come out and bunch. They're going to trade the bunch. How are you going to attack? We saw that in the first series, Vance, and they and they got him like that. So I guess I I wasn't really surprised because for as good as Michigan was all season, that was one of the things they have continue to have problems with formation, pre snap motion tempo that we saw him hit him with tempo so that they had some success with those things i kind of get what shocked me vance was how good stetson bennett was in this game he made plays under with with pressure in his face he made plays with his legs and then think about the amount of responsibility they put on that on that dude's shoulder 13 rpos in the first half every time michigan it seemed like walked the extra guy down in the box they rpo'd it and he executed. I want to say he was damn near perfect in the RPO decisions. I was I was surprised by that, Vance. I was surprised too, but remember they just played Alabama. And to him, he saw the best defense that he could possibly see from the secondary linebackers up front. So he was not rapping as far as being on the big stage. It looked at times as if the Michigan team was rattled about being on the big stage, which really surprised me. Uh, the motions, the shifts. Remember, I told you. If I was getting ready to play these guys, that first day I would have two periods, at least 20 minutes, to bunch formations. Then after that, I'm going to start mixing it in with all the shifts, the motion. Inside zone means RPO. I mean, so I'm going to work on the things that they do well and take that away. And I said the last thing that concerned me was the quarterback was more athletic than what people gave him credit for, that he had the speed to get away from pressure, which he did. I mean, so it's as if... Our players never saw video on what these guys were going to do. They like they were prepared for all the shifts. They were prepared for all the motions. And I'm at, I'm watching this game. I got to be honest, Sam. I'm so upset. I'm starting throwing things at my TV. I'm pissed off. Did we not practice that? Did we not talk about that? I mean, I'm losing my mind because I was, I was, I was really in shock. I was really in shock. So if I was in shock, I can imagine how those guys felt on the sideline from the players and the coaches that. They went so easily down the football field, really the first three drives. They were trying to trust the football in, in the first quarter. It's four. Yeah, they, they got in the rhythm. And, you know, so, some of it was, again, the recurrent themes in this. You know, this is going to be an offseason emphasis because it was, a, it was a great season for the team collectively. You've been raving about Mike McDonald all season and the job he did as a first-time defensive coordinator. Getting the team a defense that was advanced. They were terrible last year. Terrible. And getting them to the point where they completely 
change the flip the script and they were good this year they were they were a reason for this team's success all season long and you can only plug so many holes and i just felt like that was one that they weren't quite able to plug as the season went along but again there were some other times where you know you just you tip your cap so number 19 the 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 play on the wheel like the his first big play vance now they came out if you remember it was i think it was a it was three tight ends yeah. and so they michigan they they go to to match up right and they take dax out the game and now jalen harrell is one-on-one -on -one. he's one-on-one -on -one with with number 19. now i mean at that point you just got to be like man you you flip it I mean, you, you're trying to play the matchup game, and they, here they are. They take advantage of your matchup. Well, number one, Dak's not coming up the ball game. I know he didn't show up to uh, the, the game until Thursday, I guess. Guess what? He's a veteran. Dak's not coming out the game for me. He's my best defensive back. I mean, so they're going to go to 13 personnel. We go to base or heavy personnel. Dak's in the game. I'll say, Dak, you find him 19 because he's a receiver. I'm going to match him up. I'll say, you might have missed a whole week of practice. But you know what? You're the one guy, one plus one equal two. From other guys, it might even be 11. So you see him 19, it's a one and a nine. You, we play man to man, you go cover him. No linebacker gonna be on him. So again, it's called matchup. If you look at Nick Saban or Bill Belichick, I can promise you, they're not gonna allow that guy to beat them more than once. You know, the kid had a great game versus Alabama. So they're gonna play again. I can promise you that number 19 not gonna catch no 10 balls. They're going to take him out the mix. They're going to make other guys beat him. Next thing is, if I'm a secondary coach, I'm going to play outside technique on these receivers unless they get over split. Why? Because they run hitches and go, and they big. And then they show you fast, they big, so I'm going to make sure I can get them back inside to the safety. We walk from press play inside technique. It's like pitch and catch. So there are certain things you do as a defensive coach to hopefully help your players out. I go back to I'm with Irvin Meyer University of Florida. We play Oklahoma in the, in the national championship game. So we're going to play inside technique because they run a bunch of slants. First play, they come out, take it back. The third play, they run a vertical route. Major right today, that's been called target. He knocked the guy out of the game. Game was really over with for a whole half. So after that one play, I said, we're going to go back to outside technique because they want to use their speed. We're going to take away their speed. I never saw those adjustments by Michigan defense. The entire ball game, I didn't see those adjustments whatsoever. I'm taking 19 out of the game. I know they're going to be in a bunch. Okay, so... Let's just make a couple of field calls. Get our guys lined up. Let these guys shift all over the place. We're going to sit there and laugh, and then we're going to cover down. So there's certain things you got to do as a defensive caller to make adjustments to protect their players if they rattle. Well, I didn't see that for the first time this year. The game was going fast for everybody. i got to be honest. I didn't see the adjustments I'd seen in the previous ball game. I really didn't. So if, you could, if we could talk about a few specific plays. What did you see on that that play that I was talking about the 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 tight end wheel where Harrell where Harrell was was man to man was that just a simple hey my guy was better than your guy kind of play I mean with the personnel on on that was on the field and with the coverage at the time was there was there a bust was there a miss or did their guy just beat Michigan's guy that guy just beat our guy and, and they must have known that in the past every time they run thirteen personnel you know that's three tight ends one back in the ball game that Michigan goes big personnel. In other words, they're going to match up for the run game. But again, when you look at Georgia, early on in all ball games, those formations for one thing, throw the football. They can go max protect and get them 19. I remember I told you that, that 19 wasn't going to match. He wasn't going to stay in the block. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. I say, they keep other guys in, but he's actually a best receiver. So there was no way possible you can keep him, keep him in to protect. So they understood Michigan going to match up personnel-wise. So now we're going to have a linebacker against our best receiver, which was a mismatch, which it was. And let's go to that first drive, and they get in bunch formation, and they throw a touchdown pass out of bunch formation. How is that possible? Didn't we talk about bunch formation? They're not doing that. I'm not going to allow that to happen because I'm working on bunch. I'm going to have three or four calls versus bunch formation. Well, that is not going to beat me. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm not going to allow 19 to be running free down the football field like no one ever saw he was a player. Because if one guy will take out of the mix, it was him. Now, the other guys might go for 5,000 yards, Sam. But number 19, he's going to go for a headache. I got Tyler and all the national waiting for him. 
because I'm just going to take them out of the mix. I'm going to make them beat me by doing things they didn't want to do. They beat us by throwing the football, and that's they're not a passing team. Yeah, they uh, they motion formation and really exploiting they attack Michigan at the linebacker level seem like more at least at least in the early going eventually we'll get to this Vance where they start running by him in the secondary yes, they but did. but initially it was we can take advantage of Michigan in the in the middle of their defense and they had some success doing that but that's been a concern the whole year in zone football our linebackers have not done a great job dropping the entire year you go back to the Ohio State game Ohio State has success I caught the dagger out. We're working between the hashes. I'm hashes, playing a guy, bringing a guy back inside. I mean, so again, when you watched us play the weakness from game one to now, with the linebackers in zone football, and we're primarily zone team. And so what do you do? You attack those guys. And that's what they did. And that's been, again, hopefully we're improving that area next year. But it hurt us in this particular ball game because we just did, we did not improve in that particular area throughout the years for his past couple. Did a better job in run fits, but I'm watching this, okay? And we talked about one of Michigan's base run stuff, where the end coming to B gap and you bring the Sam off the edge. Well, I'm watching a play that Georgia ran at the defense. So the linebacker is really a B to C guy outside because there's no A and B gap. Do you know he went and hit his head in the A gap in the ball, he was a C gap by a 15-yard play? We talked about that too. Again, it's, that's a linebacker again. So again, that's they, one of their base stunts. The mistakes they made in game one, well, guess what? They made it in the semifinals game. The same guy made the same mistake. We got to get that corrected. That, can't, that cannot happen. So again, when I look at Dax, I say one plus one equal, equal two. From a linebacker, one plus one equal 11. We got a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, if, if you look at in a season where they, I mean, this was. <laughs> They did an amazing job turning this defense around. You see, you see from year one to year two where the adjustments gonna have to come. They they did a, a better job up for a much better job up front this year. They did a much better job on the back end this year. Now I think from season one to season two of Mike McDonald, I think it will be bringing that the consistency of play at the linebacker level, particularly in pass in, in pass coverage and zone. I think that will be the, the biggest deal. And then you also pointed out at times there were poor run fits. But I thought I thought that was in part a product of guys. I mean, you, you saw them trying to get lined up at snap or, or being tempoed and getting to that point. And if it's a pass play, who has who, that wound up being an issue at times. And then if it's a run play, fitting it right. And that was all, a, it, to me, at times a, a byproduct of, of just not being able to get lined up against their from their formations and their motion and that has to be corrected in in the offseason but i wanted to get to your your thoughts on the big play touchdowns they had so you had the you had the one that you just mentioned the very first touchdown where number 19 is wide open and flat mm. that was uh, and so but then as you get later in the game you had the uh you had the sort of the, the double move for the touchdown running down you had the halfback pass uh, for a touchdown where it seemed like on, on both of those long uh, pass plays, it seemed like the corner just stopped or just lost track of the ball in both instances. One time the corner did stop. I mean, he, I thought he was going to be in good position. When he looked back, he stopped. He didn't think the ball was coming and he picked up. It was too late. And on the halfback pass, it, 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 it's to me, is what was a safety? Because I've always, ta always taught safety this. Anytime there's a run, that's key to number one. If number one's blocking, okay, that's fit. If number one is not blocking, you have no business coming up. So, therefore, if the corner were to fall down, I still have a guy in position to give me a chance. I mean, so, again, you can go back and you can correct some of those things. You talk about gadget and trick plays. All coming to the ball game, people kept talking about how uh, uh, gadgets have done a great job with – different type of formation and plays and gadget plays and this and that. Well, guess what Georgia said? We can do the same thing. And they did it for a touchdown. So they gave Michigan some of the things Michigan's offensively been giving to other people. But again, I go back and also your eyes. What are your eyes? So the biggest thing defensive coaches talk about, linebacker, secondary, and D-line, 
where are your eyes? In other words, are your eyes on the right keys? And if they're not, then you can be fooled. And if you your eyes on the right keys, a lot of times those plays don't work against you. And like the touchdown going back to the 19, they were in quarters. But it was a tight end and Z to the field. So technically, they don't have a guy in position to take the tight end who went to the who, that's number 19 who went out and scored that touchdown. Mm -hmm. So your alignment has put you in a position right now. The safety didn't take him right now, which he did because it's like they're playing quarters. They had nobody to take because the linebacker was playing one. So the tight end, he was nobody was close to him. So that was a good call by by Georgia understanding what Michigan likes to do in the red zone. Yeah, and they, that's they not an adjustment box. They scouted us really well. Yeah, they did. They did. And, and and so, you know, we could spend all day talking about Michigan clearly didn't play their best game. Uh, it was, you know, of, of all the games this season, you know, it, the final game was where they had their worst contest, which is unfortunate because Georgia played their best game. Yes. Now, I don't I don't think that Georgia's three touchdowns better, but I do think that they're better. I think that that was that was evident in this game. And, and so you see if you're Michigan, you see there's another level to get to. Now, I want to get your your full assessment of, of the defense in the season after I get your thoughts just on the other side of the ball, because I'm sure you've been in games, Vance, where, man, everything that you worked on, everything that you thought was going to go right, man, you just. I mean, they're just getting you. They're getting you on defense. You need the offense to pick you up on some days. Just like you pick up the you pick up the offense on some days, defense sometimes needs the offense to pick them up. This was a day where they need the offense to pick them up. And, you know, this was a day where the offense could, couldn't match. I was wrong. And let me say this again for the record. I was wrong in my assessment of the quarterback battle. I said very vividly and pointedly that, Michigan was better off at the quarterback position in this game than Georgia. That Michigan was going to get a better performance out of the quarterback position than Georgia got. That wasn't just wrong. It was ex it was very wrong. It was overwhelmingly wrong. It, it, it sounded like, what are you watching wrong? Now, I don't know that even Georgia fans expected Stetson Bennett to play like that, but clearly they got some playmaking at their quarterback position and Michigan needed to get more of it because the, the rush, they couldn't protect in this game. You know, one thing we talked about is saying, in order for Michigan to win this ball game, they would have to throw the football. And that's not the strength of our team, is throwing the football. The strength of our team is running the ball. And I also said we're going to have a hard time running the ball because that nose guard so big. And they, do, they, they play a defense similar to what we do defensively. They move guys around. They stunt and they twist, which can make it difficult for us. But that's why I said, watch, watch what Alabama did. They did what to make through the football over their head. The teams that had success, including Texas A&M, who also beat them, they threw the football to soften up the run game. We're not a passing team. Our best receivers got hurt, I think, the first game of the year. And so we're trying to run the football, and that nose goal, I mean, we couldn't block him to save our lives. And they said in their weight room, they had a sign about how the offensive line was the offensive line of the year. So – they worked on that and said, okay, we can improve you a point about how good you guys really are. And I think they showed it. But to me, when I look at our quarterback play the entire year, we were very conservative for the things we asked him to do. We never asked him to beat people throwing the football. So in this ball game, and we, you and I talked about this, we said that in order to beat Georgia, we had to throw the football. So we had to take him out of his comfort zone, out of the play com uh, college comfort zone and throw the football. We didn't have success in trying to do that. So, therefore, they had no chance whatsoever in helping the defense out because the defense was in trouble early and often. And you looked at our second series and, and, and Coach goes for it on fourth town. I'm screaming, what are we doing? Put the football. Don't give them a short field. And we gave them a short field. They went right down the field and scored. So, now it's 14-0, to and we're on the six minutes of the ball game. We're in trouble. I mean, so it, it's a lot of things that – that went wrong, it's, no matter what we did, it went wrong in that ball game. let's just be honest. But at the end of the day, I look at the season when no one gave us credit, no one had us at the top of that 25, outstanding coaching job by Coach Harbaugh and, and a great job by Mike putting together the defense and having such great success with what he's doing. So let's not forget that. We could talk about this one game, but we weren't supposed to be there. 
Okay, but you are there, you want to win. But I look at the entire year, and my hat's off to those guys. They did a tremendous job. And going forward, looking for next year, talking about Mike's second year, well, it's a lot of key defensive people not going to be there, especially up front. Because I thought in the first ball game, I said, who can give us a pass rush without blitzing? Remember we talked about that? I was concerned about that. Can we rush the quarterback without blitzing guys? Well, all of a sudden, Aiden shows up. All of a sudden, Jabo shows up. I'm like, wait a minute now. We got two defensive ends as good as anybody in the country. We don't have to blitz. We can, we can play coverage. And so all those things kind of got better and better. How you call the games got better. The mental mistakes got better. So my hat's off to this. I mean, this was a great year. I mean, let's be for real. We were where we're not supposed to be. And my hat's off to him. I got a lot of respect for the Michigan team for this year. And what a way for the seniors to go out for the season, not just game, but for the season when nobody gave them a chance. And they beat Ohio State, which they hadn't beaten in over 10 years. So to me, this season was a success no matter how you look at it. Yeah, I think that perspective is important because it, it was a disappointing finish, make no mistake. Uh, and it, it's made more disappointing because you know, you know they didn't play their best game. And I'm not saying that to take away from Georgia. Because Georgia had a lot to do with why Michigan didn't play its best game. Let's be clear on that. Uh, it's not like Michigan just went out and made a bunch of mistakes and or or they didn't have it schemed up right all the time. It, Georgia forced a lot of Michigan's poor play. So let's be clear on that. But there were some opportunities in there to to make some plays and, and to make and to have some calls that, that they weren't able to capitalize on in this game. That does not obscure your broader point that we were talking about this team being seven and five, eight and four. Yep. Nobody had them winning the Big Ten championship. Nobody had them beating mm -hmm. Ohio State. Nobody was talking about them being a playoff contender. So you can't come back at the end and move the finish line and say, oh, this was a you know, this was a bad season or a bad fit based on that game that no one on the, you know, in the in the outside the fan base had them maybe competing for. This is to your point. Uh, an outstanding, outstanding season that puts them on the doorstep of, of competing again moving forward. Now, now I'm talking to you, defensive coordinator, Vance Bedford. You, you're losing Aiden for sure. Dave Ajabo just announced that he's out. Dax, good chance that he's going to declare. So you got a lot to, to plug in. You got some potential and some talent there, but no proven playmaker. So is it off base for me? Like if you if you were if you guys are sitting as a staff and you're talking about what the season's gonna look like, I know you're talking about the fixes that you have to make as a defense, but are you looking at it and saying, hey man, going into this season, we might have to be a little more we might have to put a few more points on the board offensively while we bring the defense along. Is it off base to be thinking that way? Well you always talk about team. And one thing Michigan was a team is if people don't give the offense the credit they deserve because what they did, they ran the football, which protects the defense. My dad always had this comment. You know what the best defense is in the fourth quarter? When they're on the sideline, offense moving the football and keeping you off the football field. And that's so true. I've been a DB coach. I've been a defensive coordinator. And the best defense we played is when I was on the sideline watching, cheering the offense on. So I think, I don't know how many guys are leaving offensively. But, again, for Big Ten football, I think the offense line can do a great job in, in, in shortening the game. But if you could shorten the game, you're going to win game. And the next thing is, let's continue to improve in the turnovers. If you can take the ball away, that also gives the offense more opportunities. That comes into play. Scheme-wise, I think Mike's going to continue to do a great job. I, I love what he did defensively scheme-wise. I think we're going to see that. But some of the individual plays that Aiden made or Jabo made, we're going to miss some of those plays. Let's be honest. Those two guys did a tremendous job making some individual plays, but other guys have to step, step up. We can also miss Dax. Dax has no reason to come back. Hopefully he has his degree. If he has his degree, go ahead and go to the league. You know, he's late first, second round pick. My hat's off to him, but if he doesn't have a degree, he needs to consider on what it's all about. Because the NFL, not for long, it's not guaranteed for anybody. But I think looking forward, our defense is still going to do a great job next year because what we do scheme-wise. I think we can have some people to replace those guys. It's going to take two or three guys to replace Aiden. Let's be honest. He was a special player. And at the first of the year, I had my doubts. You know, I'm like, can we get a pass? So I made that comment. 
But as the season went on, my mind changed. We're going to need three guys to replace Aiden Hutchinson. I'm just going to be honest with you. If Dax leaves, I don't see a guy in the secondary I saw this year that's anywhere close to Dax. Dax appeared to me to be a leader, a playmaker. And he played nickelback. And that's, that's a not easy position to play. You put playmaker in that position. So if he leaves, you lose losing a big playmaker. But it's a comment they made during the game. They said Georgia had something like 25 five-star players, and Michigan had seven. So it's, I look at the scoreboards like they got 25 points, you got seven points. So we've got to raise our level of recruiting, and this season should improve or we get more five- and four-star guys. Now, let's get five-star guys that are really players, not just because you got stars on them. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've seen that where they got five stars. I don't know who gave them to them, because they were a gift. They should be three-star guys. I've been around some of that, and, and that gets you beat. So as you look at these guys, do a great evaluation. Is this guy really a player? In other words, does he have more to give? Some guys might be top, they be five-star topped out, which means they're not getting any better. They're as big as they're going to get, as strong as they're going to get, as fast as they're going to get. They topped out because they had a great high school program and a strength coach. So as you evaluate these players, you're looking for – how well will they be two, three years now, from now? And so let's get those kind of players. And now Michigan to be on party whenever you compete with Ohio State, because let's be honest, Ohio State is still, still kingpin. We're knocking down for one year. For one year, okay, now you make it two or three years, now you can stay we back. We're not back right now. One year don't make you back. You got to have two, three, and four years to say, now, nah, hey, we're back to what Michigan once was, and let's get it done all over again. Yeah, man, it's been a fantastic uh, and an educational season. Uh, entertaining and educational. That's what you were this year, Vance Bedford. I, <laughs> I get so many, so many comments like, man, I'm learning a lot. I'm laughing a lot at the same time with Vance because he's he's educational and entertaining. <laughs> Brother, it has been a blast. I hope you had as much fun doing it as we had as, as we had participating and as the fans had listening. You got a legion of fans, man. So if you want steak dinners, they said give us the address. You you need some you need some uh, some funding for those for those trips to the to the Emporium. They got you covered there as well. You need you need Keith Sweat's greatest hits, or you want to go to a Keith Sweat concert? They got you covered there too, Vance, because there's a whole bunch of Vance Bedford fans out here. I, I tell you what, you know, I'm a Michigan fan. I played at the University of Texas. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm down in, in Houston right now. I drove in. We're gonna be up for three months getting away from the cold. But even though I went to Texas, I'm a Michigan fan through and through. I was there twice with Lloyd Carr, and we had great success there. And I'm always gonna be a big group fan. Just watching that band come on the field gets me excited, man. Big time band. Watching them come through the tunnel. I mean, you to me, <coughs> excuse me, that's what football is all about to me. And I love doing this, so I had a I had a great time. Because football is fun to me. It's, it's, it's still a game. It's not I'm smarter than this guy and I'm analytical. It's a game. That's how it's fun. And that's what it's all about. And that's how I coach. What I did with you and the fans, that's how I coach every single day. I never backed out. <clears throat> and Mark will tell you, coach is crazy. Man. He get on you. But he's the first guy putting his arm around you saying, let's go. And he got a joke and we having fun, laughing and everything else. If I can make him laugh, they don't realize how hard they actually work. Mm -hmm. That was all, that's my plan all along. Let's have some fun, but we're gonna work hard. And it's been a pleasure, Sam, to be with you this year. It's been a pleasure to watch the Michigan fans enjoy the things we talked about. And I wish the Wolverines nothing but a, but the best. Well, hey, it's nothing but the best moving forward because you thought we made improvements this year, and Vance was the biggest improvement in the whole thing that we do. We're going to go to an even higher level next year. So be sure to tune back in. Because, see, now now Vance is experienced. Now you're an experienced media guy, Vance. I don't know how it was from year one to year two of coaching for you. But I can only I can only imagine what it was like. I imagine you were just light years better in year two. And so as good as you were in year one with us, I think it's going to be unbelievable in year two. So, folks, be sure to tune back in because the best is yet to come. For my guy Vance Bedford. Vance, love you, brother. Appreciate you, my man. Man, same here, Sam. Go blue. And again, great year for the Michigan Wolverines. Looking for bigger and better things to come.